It's a big week on the international front for both football and netball, with both national squads in Dublin this coming weekend. Gibraltar's footballers play their second UEFA 2016 qualifying game on Saturday evening, while the netball squad will play four games in three days in a world-ranking challenger tournament. I spoke to GNA president Moira Gomez recently about the international and domestic commitments for this coming season. We started last week with the back to netball, which gives the teams a wake-up call. Those teams looking for players, those players who are a bit weary of coming back to netball, maybe through career breaks, back from uni, and it gives them a taster session which went extremely well. We had the, our elite squad, our senior squad, come in to help out, give them tips, show them what a proper warm-up is, hydrating, uh, cooling down, and, and they've loved it. They're, they've come for seconds and the youngsters are behind you going through their paces with some of the elite squad there as well. So you, they're, they're doing a lot for the sport. That's right. This is a, a wake-up call for the squad to realise how much work goes into by volunteers throughout in their own time. And by helping us out in these type of sessions, it, it removes some of the tough workload that we already have. You've just been uh, re-elected president and uh, looking forward to the new season and the actual playing of it, uh, which is coming up soon. The AGM went extremely, extremely well, especially because we've managed to recruit a number of new volunteers, which you'll soon be seeing in the scene, some of them through media, some of them for our website, and that again makes a more efficient committee so that we can actually spend more time effectively where we need it. We have the UKCC award that is coming by tutors from Nepal Scotland, that's a United Kingdom coaching certificate that's to improve our overall standard of the game and also to enhance our elite squad because we are after, our aim is to improve our present international ranking. We go on to the international ranking, uh, you've got some big news that you're taking part in the Dublin Challenges in Ireland, uh, the same weekend as uh, Gibraltar play against Ireland, so it'd be good to have some supporters there from The Rock. Of course. We are always looking for supporters. This time is a tough challenge. Our squad will be facing opponents like Dublin, Northern Ireland, Malta, Switzerland, in order to improve this ranking status that we have at the moment. You've uh, had a very, very good season last year. Lots of initiative, lots of new things that came on board. Uh, the youngsters went away. They performed extremely well uh, in uh, Paris. Uh, what's on the cards for this season as a whole, for both the international and domestic scene? This year we're implementing a coaching structure. That's why our netball buddies are coming over to start it within the association and also in Westside School for their PE students as part of their GCC and A-level. So that obviously improves the standard. We're continuing with umpiring development. Nadine Pardo Samit, who leads this, is now preparing for our A-award uh, practical exam. This is happening. Part of her assessment is being done in Dublin during one of the matches. And we're also preparing five potential B-award umpires to also pass their assessment in UK, which means that obviously a standard again will improve. Apart from that, we're starting our development skills awards for our juniors on Mondays at Westside just after midterm. We've got a netball festival at the end of October, and I could continue throughout the whole of the program with everything on our calendar of events because we are really, really busy. What's the numbers been like signing up for the league, or hasn't that started yet? We already have 32 teams registered in a senior league. We haven't started yet with our juniors league, but that looks very promising. Gibraltar's footballers had an early start on Tuesday morning as they began their journey to Dublin. I caught up the GFA national manager, Alan Buller, before he left and spoke to him about a busy week for the national side with two matches in three days. Yeah, obviously, the positive uh, we can take is um, we're looking at, you know, we, we did quite well for 45 minutes. We held for Poland. Um, and we've shown that if we can uh, maintain our, our discipline on the pitch and uh, the shape um, and be patient, then we can give anyone uh, a good game after 90 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, within 10 minutes. Uh, we, we conceded four goals and that was uh, lack of concentration. No real surprises in the squad. Happy with the boys and uh, the way they prepared for the, from their Premier Clubs uh, to what you've seen or haven't you had a chance to uh, look at them yet? I've looked at them, obviously, um, with, it, with, it, with their teams. Um, but obviously some of them I haven't been able to look at them because they've been uh, sitting quite a bit on the bench. Um, 
But, you know, it's, uh, when I get over there to Ireland, I'll see how they are, I'll see how they are, those that haven't been playing regular, see how men mentally prepared they are, and just work on that, and um, that's what I've got to, to work on. Is that disappointing that they're not getting into their teams here in Gibraltar now that this uh, new pro football has hit the rock? Yeah, it's very disappointing, and uh, we always knew that this could, could happen, uh, and it's happened. Um, and, yeah, it's very disappointing because, obviously... We're not just looking at these lads that I've got with me. We've got to look at the, the younger ones coming through. And, and uh, they're starting to get to um, just into that bottleneck. Uh, that unless that, you know, we do something with them, uh, who knows what national players we'll have in the future. You've been very, very vocal, according to the Irish press, about what you're looking at and how you're going into there. Is it a sort of mind games you're playing with uh, supposedly Martin O'Neill? No, no, you know, it's, it's, it's no mind game, uh, you know. Um, what I said, it's exactly what I did, because obviously someone asked me how, how we managed to, to draw against Slovakia, and um, sometimes I analyse um, some of the managers, you know, and, and feed, get from them um, different things and push them into different, different areas. And uh, at the end of the day, people are going to realise um, that... The manager's, it's like driving a car, he's got the steering wheel. Um, and if you can make him turn to the left, the, the car will go to the left, and it's simple as that. And uh, if we look at the fact that this is our first double header at this level, um, prepared for it? We're, we, we are prepared, and uh, as best as we can be. Um, it's our first double header in a Euro qualifier. Um, it's going to be tough, very, very tough. Um, and, you know, we, we've just got to learn from it and, and, and try our best. What would be a positive response from the two games overall? I, I need to get a result and uh, we're, we're trying to get points and that's what we're, we're working towards. Staying with football and moving to the domestic scene, the Premier Division moved to round three at the weekend with College Europa and Lynx maintaining their 100% starts to the new campaign. Week three on the Premier calendar kicked off on Friday night with Lynx FC against Manchester 62. Lynx went into the clash having won their first two matches while Manchester had won their opening match before a late defeat to Lincoln last week. Both sides started brightly before the match exploded into life on 24 minutes. Two minutes before, Manchester were forced to change keeper with the Devils' first choice, Kevin De Los Santos, limping off to be replaced by Louis Barnfather. The young keeper's first action of the game saw him upend Lynx's Ponce in the box, earning him a yellow and a Lynx penalty. Barnfather redeemed himself from the spot of kick as he dived low to his left to keep the scores level. The remainder of the first period failed to spark into life, with Manchester much as they'd done against Lincoln a week earlier, dominating the midfield, while Lynx did look dangerous from set pieces and on the counter, but created few clear chances. The second half started in much the same vein, but within two minutes, Lynx were ahead. A simple ball into the box was fumbled by the Manchester number two. Lynx's number seven, Gonzalez, was on hand to thump the ball home. Manchester battled to get back into the match, but were unable to create any chances of note on target. The cynical side of the new-look game locally reared its head on 70 minutes, when Manchester's Jeremy Lopez was hauled back in the centre of the park, with Lynx's Caballo, the man in yellow, dropping to the floor, resulting in a melee of players. After a short while, referee Yarrow Borge, in consultation with his officials, produced three yellows, two to Lynx and one to Manchester. For the last 20 minutes of the game, Manchester chased, but it was Lynx who held on to record their third straight win and condemned Manchester to a second successive defeat. Moving to the other action, over the weekend and due to the Olympiad, the Saturday matches were moved the day, giving us to first Gibraltar Super Sunday, with a double header in the afternoon. First up, a Premier New Boys Britannia against League and Cup champions Lincoln. The match didn't set the stadium alight, with Lincoln rarely getting out of second gear, and it was the Rosier club who claimed the points with a goal in each half. The first on 19 minutes saw Liam Walker start and finish off for his first Lincoln goal, while the second came on 63 minutes, with Lincoln's talisman Lee Cassiaro hitting his third goal in two games. In the other two matches in the Premier this week, College Europa were comfortable 3-0 winners over Lions to maintain their winning start to the season, while on Monday night St Joseph's inflicted a third straight defeat on Glasses, winning the encounter 5-1. That's about all we've got time for on this week's programme, but before we go, here's the rest of the current sporting news. Staying with football and both the Women's League and Futsal First Divisions kicked off this weekend. In the Women's League, Lions Ladies beat Lincoln Ladies 3-2, while Manchester 62 defeated Glasses Ladies 3-0 on Saturday afternoon. 
In the first round of games in the Futsal First Division on Sunday, there were wins for St Joseph's, Glasses, Lynx and last season's champions, Jib Scorpions. Moving to sailing and Charlie Lavarello has won this season's Kings Cup despite only a third place finish in the only race sailed this weekend due to the lack of wind. The win in the fourth race in the Jubilee Series went to Louis Triai Senior, Sailing Viking. There was paddle tennis action at Sand Pits this weekend with the paddle fraternity holding a 12 hour marathon in aid of the GBC Open Day. And finally away from the rock and pool and Gibraltar have been represented at the Ireland Blackball Championships which have been taking place in Rossife, Scotland. Gibraltar had two men's and two women's teams competing. The success came in the individual women's final, which was an all-Gibraltar affair, with Gibraltar's leading lady, Nikki Crayer, being crowned champion. That's all for this week from the Sportsport team. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.